we have Mr. Steve Zahn and Ms. June Diane Raphael. Thank you so, so much for joining us. We love this movie so much. I was just wondering if there's something focusing on the movie or just real life that you would want to bring from the 80s to now. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of things. But we'd have to re regress, wouldn't we? We'd have to go backwards in time. We'd have to we'd have to shed some things, you know. Remember having arguments about like who was right about who was in a movie without having to look it up and and are arguing for like. And now we do that, isn't it interesting? You go like, no, 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 don't look at your phone, don't, don't, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Let's Everybody have, can be an I, expert I, now because we have all the information. Yeah. But it's interesting how that technology has changed the dynamic of, of how we interact with, with each other and how families interact with each other and how we spend time together. You know, that's what I'd like to have back in some, some way. I, 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 I happen to think that the pendulum is swing, has swung so far to the side that, that it has to start coming back. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's so far over. I think so too. Does that I make mean, sense? it does. I was going to say trickle down economics, but I guess that too. Um, <laughs> Daryl, I feel uh, the same. I'm like, I, it's, it's not that I want to necessarily bring things from the eighties to now, but I, d I do think that we're really nostalgic and most people are yearning for, you know, more connection. That's not through a screen and that's, that feels more authentic in a way and where every experience feels more special because we don't have everything at our fingertips and you know where our choices were much more limited things were special in a different way and i think it's hard it's just harder as a parent to create that when if you have the internet at home your kids can have access all the time to kind of everything so um, I think parenting kids and making sure that they don't just, you know, function from that, like you want something, you get it right now type of mentality um, is harder. And I, that's, that's something I, I wish for. Hey, thank you so much. So I would love to know, what would you describe as kind of the overall message uh, that you want take, families to take away from this movie? Ooh, I suck at that. Ooh. I'm gonna take a stab, Steve. And yeah, go for it. I'll go for it. I'll go for it. Um, I'm heading in. Oh man. So <laughs> thank you. So I think, you know, overall that, that, well, listen, the message that I took away that I hope other people take away is, you know, um, the time and time with your family, especially as a child and is really hard to appreciate. And it's really hard to appreciate what our parents are doing for us when as kids, understandably, we just want what we want. And we can't see, you know, through their eyes and we can't see their perspective. And, you know, that's what I love about the movie is that it helps us like create, you know, or think about that lens of, it made me think about, oh God, my parents work their asses off to, create these special experiences for us that I know I wasn't as grateful for as I should have been. Um, and yet I'm doing the same for my kids and I don't expect them to like throw me a parade. I want to do that. And so it's this kind of like generational understanding that you, you get. Um, and as you get older and that's to me, you know, seeing Neil Patrick Harris's character and the older Jake pass that same message onto his daughter. There's just some like beautiful generational like narratives that, that are like woven through the story that I just think it's it's really beautiful. And that's really what I hope people take away from it. I agree. I think that's good. <laughs> uh, no, I do. I mean, you know, I have parents that are that are are getting old. And, and there was a pandemic and we couldn't get together. Yeah. That's going to end. And then a new tradition will happen. Mm -hmm. And then my sisters will have to create a new tradition. And then my kids will have to create their new tradition when I'm gone. And then their kid, you know, it's just kind of interesting. 
It's yeah. like, how do you keep it going? Was there a specific gift growing up that you wanted that you didn't get or a favorite gift that you received? Well, I think, you know, God bless my parents. I got most of the things that I really asked for. The one thing I, I remember getting that I didn't want was my dad was, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they were from Filene's basement, had purchased in like a number of irregular sweatshirts that didn't fit anyone. They looked normal in the box. And then I put one on and like one arm was like up here. The other armhole was down there. I mean, I couldn't believe they were even selling them. My dad was the kind of guy who just was like, it's a sweatshirt. It'll keep you warm. Like, who cares what it looks like? You know, I didn't understand having three daughters who cared deeply about fashion and clothes. And so I remember the Christmas where we all got multiple irregular sweatshirts um, individually wrapped. And there was like a giant stack of presents, which we were so psyched about and then realized they're all irregular sweatshirts. That was a tough Christmas. I remember my dad. My dad um, spent weeks build, building me a train set that was that on a, too sweet. that had mountains and streams and fields and pan made trees and I, I had no clue until Christmas Eve, and I was blown away. And I knew as a kid how much time was put into that. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. That was pretty special. Mm. And my sister gave me a tub of. Cool whip. Okay. That was horrible. Honestly, that sounds great though. Like I, you said that that was the worst present you ever got. I'm like, that's well, that's bad. like when you're low that. on your, and like, and I do this with my kids. It's like you have to go get something for your brother. Right. Like, oh, I'll just go into the pantry. And you have to, and don't ask them. I'm not right. buying it. You have to get them something. So we started that era. And that's when my sister was like, here's some cool whip. Here. Uh, there was any scenes that were really challenging to be filming, uh, playing the role of the mom, you know? Like, I love the scene that you gave them the bre breakfast and say it's frozen. And they said, just put it on your arms and then it will warm up. So there weren't any challenging scenes for you to film? The, well, all of the scenes, you know, th those types of scenes, well, when we were uh, in the flash, the flashback scenes in the 80s were, were familiar to me and, and I was really playing a version of my own mother who was a school teacher in the 80s, you know, in a very similar kind of economic sphere and so so much of it felt so familiar to me but I, I, I think the thing that was was more challenging was definitely the present day scene with Neil Patrick Harris and you know that that was like kind of gut wrenching and sad and um, harder. But the rest of the scenes that you know, Christmas morning and driving to the mall and being like the taskmaster at the mall, all of that felt not necessarily like how I am as a mom, but it felt very much so like I was just doing a version of of the woman I know, you know, almost better than myself, my own mother. Um, so it was really. It was not just easy. It was like, it was lovely to, to embody that. Tell me when you guys got the script, what drew you to your character? What similarities did you have to your, do you have to your character? Well, I, you know, I, the, the character reminded me so much of my own mom and I had an immediate affection for her. And, um, this is sort I felt, I felt very close to the character because, um, you know, because she reminded me so much of, of my mom, who was a public school teacher and, you know, uh, overwhelmed all the time, but we also were well loved if in living in chaos. So that, that sort of dynamic of, you know, not necessarily on all of it and lots of loose threads <laughs> running around the house and, you know, you'll probably, you know, think someone forgot to pick you up like multiple times a week. Um, but you also knew you were loved and taken care of. And that that sort of type of mothering and parenting felt so familiar to me. And um, that's really why I wanted to do it. I adhered to this, this guy who thinks he can fix things. I mean, I can fix some things. But, you know, again, I live on a farm. I That's all I do, really. But half of the things I don't fix because I can't. Um, that that's that's a quality that I, you know there's a and I'm kind of like this guy 
this guy, uh, you know, go outside and play guy. That was, that's me really. Uh, but, but what makes me different than this guy is I was, I, I was always like, no, we're going hiking. I did it with them. You know what I mean? And I think nowadays, um, this generation, I mean, we, we do, we do more with our kids than my folks, you know, my folks always, my mom would lock the door. She would go, go out. And if you didn't come back by five o'clock, cause we ate supper and it's called yeah, supper. In sure. Minnesota. If you weren't there by five 15, you were dead. You know yeah. what I mean? But, yep. but the whole day you didn't have to check in, you yeah. know? So I have a lot of those qualities yeah. that, that I found um, that, that John has, but, um, but just not as harsh. <laughs> That's all. I feel like we've been really deep. And so I'm going to end it with something that's kind of silly, but I loved all, I grew up playing Atari and then Nintendo. And now that we're well beyond that technology, I still go back and play those old school 8-bit games. So I'm wondering, did you guys grow up playing video games as well? And do you have that connection to those old school games? Are you into the modern, really high tech, amazing graphic games that you have available now? I'm into all of them. I mean, I'll play, I'll play, I'll, I'll game with my son. But then yep. I got like, uh, you know, I have an Asteroids arcade in the basement. I got a Miss Pac-Man Galaga tabletop. I got a, um, I got a um, Adam's Family pinball. I dig that. But like um, my assistant and I, for years in my trailer, when I was shooting a film, all we played was 2001 NHL hockey on PlayStation, but it had to be 2001. It was a great year. You could turn off all the penalties and just fight. <laughs> yeah, my, when my wife would take away video games from my son, I would be behind my son going. <laughs> because we played together. That was my entertainment. That was, yeah, so you had to suffer the consequences. Daughter, daughter never played. She hated it. Thank you guys so, so much. Thank, Thank you. you.